U.S. President's National Security Advisor promised to keep a close ties with South Korea in the face of such further potential airspace breaches. Now, apart from that, the security chiefs of Seoul and Washington agreed to discuss a range of issues, including the Korean peace process. Our Shin Zemin has more. Both South Korea and the U.S. have agreed on close cooperation following the unprecedented violation of Korean airspace by Russia and the entering of Korea's air defense identification zone known as Kadiz by both Russian and Chinese military warplanes early Tuesday. According to a readout by the presidential spokesperson, Seoul's national security adviser Chung Le Yong explained the severity of the recent airspace violation to his visiting American counterpart John Bolton. And to that, the American official responded by calling for the two nations' tight consultation in order to be able to prevent similar situations from happening again in the future. The two also reassured their close ties in dealing with the Korean peace process, referring to the promise made by the leaders of North Korea and the U.S. last month at the inter-Korean border. Chung and Bolton shared an understanding that working-level talks should resume immediately. Holding separate meetings with South Korea's security chief, the defense minister, and the top diplomat, Bolton reassured the two sides' strong ties. So there are, there are many challenges out there, some in this part of the world, some in other parts of the world. But uh, I'm confident that uh, ROK and U.S. will work very closely together mm -hmm. to resolve them. Mm -hmm. Apart from security-related issues in the region, the two security chiefs also promised to continue consultations on the U.S.-driven efforts to ensure free navigation in the Strait of Hormuz, as Washington had been working to build a multinational force to safeguard commercial shipping in that area. But no mention of the dispatch of Korean troops to the region was made. Asked for the issue of defense cost sharing starting the year 2020, the Allies agreed to continue discussions in the most reasonable and fair way. And contrary to what many expected, Bolton's meeting with high-level officials in South Korea didn't result in any significant conclusion to Tokyo's retaliatory trade curbs against Seoul, at least according to the press release. Bolton left the door open by saying that both Seoul and Tokyo maintain close cooperation, likewise with their allies, Washington. And that could be an unspoken push for both South Korea and Japan in extending their bilateral deal on exchanging military information. Shin Zemin, Arirang News.